If you could, please rise. Gentlemen, remove your caps. Before tonight's national anthem, we would like to remember a, a gentleman who played a big, big part in, in this racetrack for a long, long time. Uh, we here at Pittsburgh's Pennsylvania Motor Speedway lost one of our dedicated employees over the winter. Uh, Gus Monaco passed away. Gus when his, was in his 80s. And most of you probably don't know who Gus was or never met him personally. Gus was one of the men who maintained the racing surface. He started helping Nick Guerin, who built the Speedway, which opened in 1979. Gus started helping back like in 1978 when they were just putting it all together. He told Nick that he would help him with the grading, et cetera, until he found someone. Well, Gus never left. He was uh, still working with Brian and John Underwood at the Speedway last season. Gus is survived by his wife and two daughters. We thank him for his many years of service and ask that you pause for a moment of silence in his memory. Thank you. We also want to remember tonight and we send our condolences out to Joe Hackamer. Uh, Joe's raised pure stocks here for a long time. His wife, Jean, recently passed away uh, at the end of April, and we send our condolences to Joe. This time, please join me in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what surprise we have at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous flight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red Pittsburgh's very own Wee Jams with the singing of our national anthem. Keith Rodriguez, Brandon Burgoon, bring the field to life off a turn four. The green is out. And it'll be Burgoon, the Three River Scrap Iron 17, quickly into the lead. Rodriguez second. Miley tries to get by Stephens and does for third. Johnson into fourth. Atala will follow him. Itala, Johnson into fifth. Atala to sixth. Out in front, Brandon Bragoon. Keith Rodriguez still second. Jared Miley third. Jim Stephens fourth. Mike Johnson fifth. And now Atala goes high side into turn three. Miley to the inside of Rodriguez. He will make the pass, or no, he won't. Not just yet for second. Alitala on the high side in turn two, trying to carry the momentum around both Mike Johnson and Jim Steffens as they head down the back chute. Bergoon with a big lead. Rodriguez still second, Miley third. Steffens fourth, Atala fifth, and Johnson is sixth. And it's Boats and Durats. Bragoon's lead is straight away. Atala now to the outside of Stephens again. 
you remember last year Al was always fast on the outside of the racetrack. He's making it work right now as he tries to motor by Jimmy Steffens into one and he'll make the pass in the middle of one and two. Keith Rodriguez still second Jared Miley third the best Jared can start tonight's feature is 12. 1945 that last lap for Brandon Burgoon 19.45. We're past the halfway mark. Four laps to go. Four to go. 1941, that lap for Burgoon. Jared Wiley in the Calusi Chevy H1 again ducks to the inside of Keith Rodriguez and the River Salvage Airport Auto Body 29. 1934, that lap for Burgoon. Miley now may have the pass made. They're side by side. Atala looks to be closing in in the 0 2. Al Atala, the Todd's auto body, environmental, American environmental, 0 2, trying to run down the second and third place cars. Jared Miley and Keith Rodriguez put on a wheel to wheel show around the Monster Super Speedway as Burgoon laps the 11 car of Nick Durant. Coming for the white flag, Brandon Burgoon. Jared Miley now into second. Here comes the charging Alatala. Then fourth, Mike Johnson, meantime, to the inside of Jim Steffens in the race for fifth. Johnson's Kim Oil 2J into the top five. The Three Rivers Scrap Iron, Napa Bridgeville 17 of Brandon Burgoon takes the opening heat race in the Pizza Hut late models. Jared Miley second, Keith Rodriguez third, Alex Allo fourth, Mike Johnson fifth, and Jim Steffen sixth. Laps. Pizza Hut late model, second of three, qualifying heats. Coming off a of turn four, looks good at the start, and the green is out. Hot Rod Davis on the inside, Flinner on the outside. Flinner has the lead, Baker to third as they pedal down the back chute. Larry Marks fourth, DJ Miller, Tony Mussolino, Jim Lepro next in line. Oh, Jimmy Lepro in the six, trying to dive into one, gets into the left side of DJ Miller. They separate and continue. They're in a race with Tony Mussolino there for fifth. Still Flinner out in front, Davis second, Baker in third. Larry Marks by himself in fourth, Mussolino currently fifth. Left row to the inside now, breaks into the top five. In the Bud's place, Curtis Racing Equipment number six, it's the Johns towing. Flinner signs and decals, River Salvage 48. So John Flinner, your leader. Michael Davis second, Steve Baker a close third. Baker trying to close the gap on Davis off at two down the back straight. Flinner turning that last lap at 1989, five tenths slower than Brandon Burgoon. Even slower that lap at 1999. Now the track two may be slowing. It will change during the course of the evening. Flinner gets high into three. Looks like a flat tire. Something broke. Something broke on the car. I'm not sure if the tire went flat or what. Water on the track. I don't know, maybe a uh, problem with the radiator or a hose or a fan belt or something. On John Flinner's 48, you can see the trail of water right under the advanced auto parts sign on the back chute into turn three. When John set the car to three, it just drifted up the track like it hit moisture. Chuck Medved out of Imperial in the 2M. Green is out. Should say the advanced auto parts 81 of Miller. Baker trying to work the low side tonight. He's usually quick up top, but He's got that zero on the inside rail tonight. That's usually where Michael Davis likes to run, too. 
Off at turn four, Steve looking for some moisture on the bottom shelf. Tries to pull alongside of Davis as they head into one. Five down and five to go. Open motor, Michael Davis. Spec motor, Steve Baker. Jim Lepro third, the battle for fourth between Larry Marks and Tony Mussolino. Still Davis in front, Baker nipping at his heels. Tony Mussolino now has the fourth spot. Baker drops back a few car lengths in the back shoot. Here comes Larry Marks, though, right back at Mussolino into turn three. Hot Rod Davis, your leader, with three laps to go. See what a lap times Davis is turning here compared to the Burgoon and Flinter cars. He's not near as quick. Twenty-four six, but again the track could be slowing down. It had a little moisture in it earlier. Now it's slowing down, and as the night goes comes by and the sun goes down, it'll probably pick back up again. Baker goes to the outside, looking him close in a hurry. I told you. Some about the West Virginia rim rider on the outside. He puts her up top and look at him go. Steve Baker and Michael Davis wheel to wheel for the checkered flag here in the Pizza Hut late models coming off a turn four. Baker wins it. Davis second. Lepro third. Larry Marks fourth and Tony Mussolino gets fifth with his hand hanging out the window. wishes to him. Heat race number three for your Pizza Hut late models. The green is out. Free with the lead into one. Wade on the outside trying to get alongside of Alex down the back shoot. Wade goes in hard up high. Three down low as they motor off the fourth turn down the front shred. It's the plumber, Dave Wade, in front. Faree second, Hawkins third, Miley fourth, Geisler fifth. Then it's Johnny Mollick, Kerry Gasser, and the 55 of Tom Duratz. Well, Wade really crossed up in the middle of the turn. Speaking of crossed up, Jacob Hawkins gets sideways and spins. Caution is out. Dave Wade, Alex Free, nine laps to go. Third and final heat race for your Pizza Hut late models. The A train. Alex is going to take that high line where Wade was working, and he'll take it to the lead. Now Geisler Motors on the outside away down the back chute. Free in front, Geisler quickly to second. Wade drops back to third. He'll have to try to charge his way back to the front. Miley is fourth, Malik fifth. Butler pre-owned American die-cast. Number four of Alex Free, the Concord Automotive 1C of Lynn Geisler. Geisler off the bottom, trying to close ground. Lynn shows his nose off the inside of turn two. It's still awesome, Alex in front. Geisler, though, pedaling hard through three and four. He'll slide up with the lead as they race off a of turn four. Free trying to come back under Lynn, but not going to have it as Geisler down the back shoot as he extends the advantage. Wade third, Miley fourth. Jacob Hawkins, who spun early, has rallied to fifth. Let's get our stopwatch on Geisler. Dave Wade now trying to repass Alex Free after taking the lead away from him early in the event. Geisler at 19.54. That's down where uh, Brandon Burgoon was running.
Well, I'll tell you what a beautiful surface we've got here tonight. You can run from guardrail to guardrail. Smooth, fast, and racy. Two laps to go. Lynn Geis for the all-time leading late model winner right in the middle of the racetrack. Again, right at 19.49. Ben Miley fourth, Jacob Hawkins fifth. Third is Wade, second Faree. One to go for Lynn. Cochran Automotive, Tri-State Hose, Balea Oil, Groff Tractor and Equipment, Rocket. Geisler wins it. Alex Faree gets second. Dave Wade third. Ben Miley fourth. And Jacob Hawkins fifth. Mike was second to Charlier here two weeks ago. Last feature event for your Brockers machine crate late models. Green is out. The Midway missile, Daryl Charlier, grabs the lead. Daniel Angelicchio in a hurry in the 14. He finds a lane and moves to fourth. Kerr is third. Angelicchio on the charge. He'll swing by Kerr for third. Colasar is second. And the Midway Missile is your leader. Mike Pager Jr. now, who started way in the back, starting to move up through the field on the inside of one and two. He's around the 93X of Justin Lamb as Angelicchio closes on Colasar for second. Charlier leads by half a straightaway. Angelicchio nosing ahead in the Brooks Auto Group, 14 in the battle for second. Here comes Russ in the Froggy 27 back on the outside. Mr. Pager moving on the inside off at of two. Young Mike moves to fourth. Daryl Charlier, your leader. It's a Masters build chassis with a 602 crate motor under the hood. Daniel Angelicchio second now. Colasar third. Pager's fourth. Louis Bradish fifth. Here comes Craig Catellis in the 64 moving up to sixth. Some passing going on out there in the Rockers Machine Shop Crate Late Bottles. Four laps are down. Let's get our stopwatch out and see what time of lap times these cars are turning versus our Super Late Bottles. Jalikia looks like he might be making up some ground on the race leader. Three laps to go. He's definitely closing in. Daniel Angelicchio, a college student at IUP, trying to run down Daryl Charlier, 21.4 seconds. So the crate lates are about two seconds slower than the late models. Angelicchio picking up some more ground, getting into the turn, but getting high coming off. One to go, the midway missile, Daryl Charlier. Heads into turn one of the turnkey foundations, Donaldson Supply, Oliverio Chevrolet, number 12. Off of four, the midway missile, Daryl Charlier will win it. Daniel Angelicchio second, Russ Colasar third, Mike Pager comes from last to fourth. Louis Bradish in the sixth car will get fifth. Then Craig Kitsellis, Justin Lamb, Mark Boats Jr., Terry Kerr, and Daryl Dow. Drivers that could star in the reckless epic. Off of turn four, Green is out.
It's Josh Holtgraver, the DNC Auto Body, Weaver Auto Sales, Widener Heating, Double Zero, your leader, Steve Bainey, the man on the move. Second year driver, the AEC Group, Batteries Plus, Monticello's B4 to second, and here comes Brian Hank in the Bachman Trucking 28 to third. Pittsburgh Pete Laurie of the Imperial Tire and Automotive 11 slides to fourth, and Scott Shemp, we missed Scott in the lineup. The Miley BP Car Wash, General Auto 75 is up to fifth. Two laps down and six to go. Josh Holtgraver's second year driver as well, moved from the mod lights into the crate late models a season ago. Brian Hank trying to close the gap on Steve Bainey for second. Those front three cars are all second year drivers here at Pittsburgh. 21.2 for Holtgraver. You see laps the eight of Dusty Curry. 21.2 that last lap, which is about two tenths quicker than what Daryl Charlier was turning in the previous heat race for your Brockers Machine Shop Crate Late Models. Tim Stefanik almost lost the ship off the fourth turn. The 65 gets it gathered it back, gathered back up. Two laps to go, two to go. Steve Beatty's AEC group. Battery plus B4 still second the Bachman trucking. SSI Computers 28 of Brian Hank, a close third. Then it's the Imperial Tire and Automotive 11 of Pittsburgh, Pete Loria. White flag waving for Holtgraver. Brian Hank, as close as he has been, pressuring Steve Beatty. Scott Shemp fifth, Tommy Schoenhofer sixth. Then it's the C1 of Ken Chernick and Tim Stefanik still on the lead lap. Here comes your leader, the DNC Auto Body Weaver Auto Sales Widener Heating Double Zero of Josh Holtgraver. Second place will go to. I'm not sure. Let the scores decide that one. Bryant Tank will get second in car 28. Moving forward. Green is out. Jacob, Jacob Hawkins challenging Wayne to seat, and he'll take the lead away in turn four there, completing lap one. We've seen Jacob here in a 37 Emon, very much a twin of the late model he runs. First time we've seen him here in this 13 car. To seat second, Chris Bassage third, J.E. Stalter fourth, Chuck Kennedy runs fifth. to scene still second but not by much over Chris Passage and J.E. Stalter. Jacob Hawkins though he is flying out in front. Let's see what kind of lap times he's turning. These are on eight inch tires much less grip on the racetrack with the e -bonds. Look at the Martins very bad man sliding off the low side of three and four. J.E. Stalter trying to get around Wayne to see for second down the back straightaway to see on the gas pedal hard into three. He'll slide it in there too. Stalter able to come off the bottom much better. He's got second. To see third, Bassage fourth, Chuck Kennedy fifth. Then Joel Johns, Willie Briggs, and Randy Sprouse. 
past halfway. By the way, Hawkins, that last lap was 21 88. 21 88. Chris Bassett's now able to get underneath Wayne to see and move to third. Sprouse turning laps at 21.88 seconds. Sprouse comes up on his path though. Jacob not sure whether to go low or high, and he just makes it by. J.E. Stoller second, Chris Bassett's third, Wing to seat fourth, and Chuck Kennedy is fifth. Checkered flag from Fairmont, West Virginia, Jacob Hawkins. J.E. Stalter second, Chris Bassett third, Wayne Tassin fourth, and Chuck Kennedy rounds out the top five in the A1. Early model Sunday night with all the divisions. Race time both nights at seven. Green is out. Plants is scratching this heat race in the 4J. If you remember, he brushed the wall in one and two in hot laps tonight. Jimmy Plants in the 4J. Daryl Charlier, the midway missile in front. Who's going to be second as they race off of four? Dry stats second. Kevin Miller and Clayton Kennedy battle for third. Now Tom Martinek in a hurry in the 65 cars. He marches to him. We got another car into the wall over in turn number two. Sean Shearbaum in the seven. Sean Shearbaum in the seven brings out the caution. Brock, or excuse me, Miley Truck Rental and RV Emods on the gas. The midway missile, Daryl Charlier continues to lead. Bruce Drystad second. Who's going to be third now down the back chute? Mike Bassich on the outside. Kevin Miller to the low side. They get around Clayton Kennedy. Now Bassich trying to take second away from Drystad. Charlier in a hurry up on the high side. The Parker Auto Center, W.J. Beitler Trucking, Napa McDonald, 12, and this time Ted Beaver has done a loop-de-loop -loop over in turn two. Caution is out. Seems like that's the problem spot here for the E-Mods. Ted Beaver in car nine gets it turned back around. At Toyota. Six more times around the Monster Super Speedway for your Miley Truck Rental E-Mods. Charlier on the inside. And this time Drysdale on the outside will get the jump. Bruce may think he's high, but the Midway Missile goes higher. He's right up there with the West Virginia Rim Rider. But Drystat knows that, and he's trying to make his car wide. But here comes Kevin Miller on the inside. To Toronto, Ohio. Driver likes the bottom of the racetrack. He's got the lead. Charlier tried to squeeze to the outside of Drystadt. Martinick to the inside. Miller out in front. Charlier back to second. Martinick third, then Drystadt, and Mike Bassage is now fifth. Martinick tried to take second away from Charlier at the halfway mark. Kevin Miller out of Toronto, Ohio. He's now in the middle lane. Martinek on the bottom of the 65, trying to get alongside of Charlier again as they scoot off a of turn four. 
The Allegheny Wilderness Outfitters, Bon Giorni Auto, McElhaney Auto Repair 65 of Martinek, trying to run down the Midway Missile, the Parker Auto Center, W.J. Beitler Trucking 12 of Charlier for second as Miller leads. Good race for fourth two, Bruce Drystad. The D&D Auto Service 18. And the Blair Mott Mechanical DFG Excavating 71M of Mike Bassage. We are coming to the white flag. One to go. Martinex got the advantage in four this time, but Charlier with a little more oomph down the straightaway. Back into second. Kevin Miller taking advantage of that uh, restart. I think it was on what, lap three? And off he goes. He will pick up the heat race win. Charlier second, Martinek third, Drystad fourth, Mike Bassage fifth. Green is out. Mike Mon running the monster three-quarter mile in the 39 was up there dusted off the wall in turn three, but he keeps it between the fences. Meantime, Bill Robertson out in front with Bobby Himes second. Mitch Waddle at his third in the 20. 69X Joe Anthony comes into fourth now. Joe Anthony on the move. Joe Anthony up to second. Billy Robertson, he's been fast all season long. Joe Anthony trying to play catch up, but he's long, way behind when he got to second and running out of time here with three more laps to go. Good race for third. Waddleett in the 20, Heim in the 92, and Bob Schwartzmiller, who started in the back of the pack in the 28, is now right in the mix as well. Bobby Schwartzmiller trying to duck under Bob Heim for fourth. Seventeen car Mark Perry spins but keeps going in turn four. The green stays out. Joe Anthony has closed the gap, but again he was way behind when he got to second. We've got a lap to go for Bill Robertson. Waddle at third, Schwartzmiller fourth, Bob Heim fifth. Then it's Mike Mon, Steve Webb, and Dave Slade. Schwartzmiller Ground Maintenance, MAD Custom Exhaust, and Jane Associates Grand Prix. New body style in 2008 for Bill Robertson. He is the winner. Joe Anthony second. Mitch Waddle at third. Bob Schwartzmiller fourth. Bob Heim fifth. Webb, Mon, and Slater next.
What's it say? Eight. We'll invert eight for the Emods. Thank you. Pat Weld in front, Craig Kamaker putting the pressure on. Kachuba is third, and Jake the Snake Simmons fourth. Weldon goes high, and Kamaker goes into the lead. The Hopewell hot shoot. Craig Kamaker. The premier safety and services, Morley Auto Repair 72, hasn't forgot the fast way around the Monster Super Speedway. Pat Weldon trying to close back in. The Monongahela driver, the 45. Nick Kachuba third, and Jake the Snake Simmons on the low side at close fourth. Look out Josh Wetmore in the 50. The Gumbosh towing entry gets it straightened around. He is fifth, and the 81 of Robert Betts. The F12 of Mike Harris, the former Bob Schwartzmiller, 28. We think, sure looks like it. Halfway home. Two laps to go for Kamaker. One to go for Kamaker. Weldon second, Simmons now third, and Kachuba fourth here. Sunoco Race Fuels Pure Stocks. We're going to turn it over to young Austin Earhart for the uh, amateur stock and young gun portions of the program. The Hopewell Hot Shoe, Craig Kamaker, your winner. Pat Weldon second, Jake Simmons third, Nick Kachuba fourth. The 50 of Josh Wetmore completes the top five. Coming out of the green, coming down to the green flag. Here comes Kurt Bish on the outside of Darren Ferguson, four wide into turn one. Kurt Bush. Kurt Bish takes the lead. Eric Goldberg on the outside of the 54 of Darren Ferguson. Eric Goldberg brings him into turn four, three. Sorry. It's still Kurt Bish. Second place is still the 54 of Darren Ferguson. Third is the 714 of Eric Goldberg. Here comes the 54 of Darren Ferguson to the lead on the inside of Kurt Bish out of turn four. Eric Goldberg passes Kurt Bish. Kurt Bish seems to be fading as the 22 of Robbie Torrens passes him in turn three.
Darren Ferguson comes down halfway. It's still Darren Ferguson, followed by Eric Goldberg, then the 22 of Robbie Torrens. Kirk Bish has regained the fourth position. Here comes Robbie Torrens on the inside of Eric Goldberg. Eric Goldberg on the inside of the 54 of Darren Ferguson in turn two. Coming down the back straightaway, it's still Ferguson. Goldberg comes to take the white flag. Second is the 22 of Robbie Torrens. Third is Darren Ferguson in the black 54. Kurt Bisch still in fourth. The 60 of Brian Hutchko tried to pass him on the inside. Contact in turn three. Caution is not out. The checkered flag waves for Eric Goldberg. Second is the 22 of Robbie Torrens. <laughs> Justin Pons brings the Imperial Heights Garage Young Guns to the green flag. 88 of Todd Janis on the outside coming into turn one. Contact through turn one. Michael Reft on the outside. He moves up to third. Tyler Fox is now fifth. It's still Chad Janis coming out of turn four. Justin Pawn second. Third is the nine R of Michael Reft. Fourth is the 55 of Hannah Ramsey. Oh, I'm sorry, 55 Daniel Lloyd. Still Todd Janis, Justin Pons in a close second, followed by Michael Reft in third. Michael's now on the inside of Justin Pons coming out of turn four. Justin now pulls away on the outside of Todd Janis. He takes the lead from him in turn one. Justin Pons starts to pull away by a three car length lead in the back straightaway. The 14 car has flipped in turn two. The 14, Hannah Ramsey. Caution is out. <laughs> Todd Janis brings him down to the green flag. Michael Reff passed Justin Pons on the inside, coming into turn one. He's now up to second. Todd Janis still holds the lead coming out of coming into turn two. Rich Mason still in fourth. Michael Reff will try to work the high line coming in turn three. He dives to the inside. Here's Michael Reft coming down to the start finish line. Todd Janis hangs on to the lead. But here's Reft on the inside of turn one. He seems to have made the pass in turn one and two. But here's Rich Mason right on his bumper. Rich Mason the third tries to stick a nose. Rich Mason tries to stick a nose under Michael Reft. But it's still Reft. Seventy-seven is Sean Graham on the outside of the eighty-eight of Todd Janis coming out of turn two. They come down the back straightaway, and Sean Graham gets past Todd Janis as well as the five of Tyler Atkinson. But Tyler Atkinson regains the regains his position coming on down to the start finish line. Michael Ref seems to have opened up a decent lead over Rich Mason about five car lengths or so. 
Justin Pons is back in third. Sean Graham closes on the five of Tyler Atkinson coming into turn three. He's on the outside. Atkinson holds on past the start finish line. Two laps to go. Field starts to fan out single file, but Michael Reft still leads by four or five car lengths over Rich Mason. White flag for Michael Reft. Sean Graham and Tyler Atkinson still battling in turns one and two. Michael Reft, your current points leader, coming down to his second win of the year. It's Michael Reft, finishing second is the 23 of Rich Mason, third is the 33 of Justin Pons, fourth is the five of Tyler Atkinson, and fifth is Sean Graham. Let's have a round of applause for your young gun winner, Michael Reft. Congratulations, Mike. Thank you. Good battle coming down the front straightaway there, coming back from, what was it, third? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty tough at the beginning because everyone's packed up. Then it got uh, evened out. Cars seem to be handling pretty well. You got a decent lead by five car lengths or so over Rich Mason with about three laps to go. Yeah, the car was running really good. Track dialed into the car really well. Congratulations. Here's your $20 gift certificate for Pizza Hut in the Pizza Hut Winter Circle. Awful four they come, the green is out. Gary Gasser with a problem on the start and the zero. Now the back straightaway, it's Wade in front, Rodriguez to second. Third is Lepro and he spins in front of a bunch of cars. Six, Jim Lepro, and the 17 of Larry Marks had nowhere to go. I tell you what, a lot, a lot of drivers did some great jobs of avoiding that. Lepro spun right in front of 21 cars. The Bud's place, Curtis. Equipment six into the pits. Larry Marks nowhere to go. Kaboom. In the Larry's trucking 17M. It will be a complete restart. Less than half the field was through when the caution came out. On the gas pedal again, the green is out. Dave Wade grabs the lead from the pole. The race for second down the back shoot free to the inside of Ron Rias. Baker shoots through the middle of Geisler and Davis. Geisler right there with Baker. They're side by side for fourth. Coming down the front stretch into turn one side by side ahead of them for second. Rodriguez second. Baker slaps the wall off a of turn two, able to save it, but he'll lose his spot. Brandon Bergu moves to fifth in car 17. Dave Wade in front by half a straightaway. Geisler now with the momentum on the outside down the back shoots, pulls alongside of Faree. 2M, Chuck Medved into the pits. 2M, Chuck Medved pitting. Wade in front, a race for second. Rodriguez, Faree, Geisler, Burgoon, Baker, Atala, Jared Miley, Ben Miley, and Mike Johnson. Geisler into the wall off the second turn. He keeps going. Several cars get by.
Four laps are now. Dave Wade by a straightaway. Keith Rodriguez second. Alex Faree in the mix in third. Bergoon fourth. Baker. And here comes Atala sliding through three and four. Then Miley, Miley, Geisler, and Johnson. 20 laps to go. Dave Wade's in a different time zone, but boy, there's a heck of a race going on behind him. He's got to be loving this. Stevie Baker to the outside around Brandon Burgoon, trying to move back into fourth. Michael Davis off the pace and headed for the pits in the 7M. Hot Rod Davis heading to the pits in the 7M. Seven down for the Yingling 76 of Dave Wayne. Rodriguez still second for E third, then Baker, Burgoon, and Atala. Jared Miley closing in, and we got a car up in smoke. 21, Tony Mussolino. 21, Tony Mussolino off the pace, going down the back straightaway, trying to cross the racetrack. Another car slowing on the inside of one and two. Comes your leader, Dave Wade. Mussolino gets to the inside of the racetrack. Baker now has moved all the way to second. Baker moves all the way to second. Rodriguez third, Faree fourth, Atala fifth, then it's Miley and Burgoon. 15 laps to go, Dave Wade leading the West Virginia Rim Rider by a straightaway. Rodriguez, Atala, Faree, and Miley have got a four car battle into one and two. Miley to the inside of Faree. Down the back shoot. Jared now moves up into the fifth position. Tried to work underneath the third and fourth place cars. Rodriguez still third. Miley to his inside and one and two. Atala to the outside. They're three wide for third. Off of two, Atala gets around Rodriguez for third. Wade is in traffic. His pace is slowed. The lead is shrinking. We're almost halfway. The Yangling 76. Down the back, shoot your leader, trying to lap Kerry Gasser, the West Virginia rim rider, Steve Baker, and the Farm Muse Auto Parts, Richard Construction, zero second. Atala is flying now in third. The American Environmental, Todd's Auto Body, 02. Rodriguez is fourth. Alex Faree and Jared Miley are side by side for fifth. Then it's Burgoon, Geisler, Miley, and Johnson. Another car pitting, it looks like the 11. The 11 car of Nick Durant's in the pits. Wade continues to pick off the lap cars around the 23 of Mark Motes. We are 11 laps away from the checkered flag. Two lap cars between first and second. Two lap cars ahead of your race leader. Al Atala has caught Steve Baker. The race for second is tightening up. Look at Atala slide into three. Pulls right up alongside of Baker, who will beat him off a of four in that battle for second. Dave Wade's lead is now a half a straightaway over Steve Baker and Alex Sala. Keith Rodriguez still fourth. Alex Furry fifth. Lynn Geisler and Jared Miley are now side by side for sixth. Here comes a talent. Baker trying to lap the 23 of Mark Motes into one. And they both get by. I'll tell you what. These throttle jockeys are getting it done tonight. Through three and four, it's still Dave Wade. Baker now trying to lap the 81 of DJ Miller. Slides right up against him. Goes by into one. And here comes Atala back to the inside of Baker. What a battle they've had lap after lap. Atala now contact with Baker, and he'll make the pass for second. Seven laps for the checkered flag. It's Wade in front. Baker, or excuse me, Atala second. Baker third. Fourth is now still Keith Rodriguez. Jared Miley fifth. Alex Free sixth. Lynn Geisler seventh. Brandon Bergoon eighth. Ben Miley ninth. Mike Johnson tenth. Fifth, sixth, seventh have swapped about every lap between Free, Miley, 
Rodriguez, Geisler, and a whole bunch of them. Dave Wade in clear racetrack. The Yingling. Lager. Tiger Machine Specialty Turbine. 76. Looking for his first win of the season. Five laps to go. Took advantage of that front row starting spot so far. Now it's Alley is closing, but will be run out of time without the help of a caution. Good first run, though, for the Todd's Auto Body American Environmental 02. Baker third. Rodriguez still fourth, having a great run tonight. Although Jared Miley now edges ahead of Keith in that battle for fourth into turn one. Lucy Chevy H1 up to fourth, Rodriguez fifth, Geisler and Faree battle for sixth. Three laps to go. First, second, and third have left the others behind. Miley fourth, Rodriguez fifth, Faree sixth, Geisler seventh, Burgoon eight, Johnson ninth, Ben Miley tenth. Here's your leader, Dave Wade, completing lap 23. Down the back chute. Less than two laps to go on the Monster Super Speedway. Wade looking for his 13th career Pizza Hut Super Late Model win. One lap to go. The plumber. Out of Clinton. The Yingling Lager Specialty Turbine. Tiger Machine. 76. He goes wire to wire for his first win of 08. Dave Wade. Alatala, great first night in 08. Second, the West Virginia Rim Rider gets third. Jared Miley will finish fourth. Alex Faree's first run of the year brings him home fifth. Rodriguez sixth. Then Geisler, Johnson, Burgoon, and a bunch of others. Congratulations, you stunk up the show. Well, that's good. Uh, we didn't need a caution because uh, restarts would have been kind of rough, but uh, it was a long night. We overheated the last couple of weeks and we overheated in the heat and uh, we thought it was a head gasket. We put a new rad in and that was a problem. The rad was messed up. Uh, thanks to Jason Ryder, he thought it was a rad, so he fixed it for us. He made the right call. I thought maybe you were playing the invert game in the heat, and you thought, well, maybe we'll finish third, and they'll draw nine, and I'll get on the pole, because the early in the heat, you were fast. Yeah, we were fast. Lynn was a lot faster. That's what I told Alex. I let him go. I could have passed him, but I said, nah, I'm going to start on the pole in the feature, so I let him finish in front of me. Don Gable told you he would talk to you about your uh, rapid on race and yingling driver on Monday, and you said, I'll talk to you later in victory lane. You were pretty confident. Uh, we have a pretty good race car. Uh, it was better tonight than I thought, but uh, we got we got lucky. And uh, where's Dawn at? Here I am, Dawn. <laughs> hey, uh, the track looked beautiful tonight. Track was good. I'll tell you what, it's been this is the best the track's been in two years. Uh, the last three nights we run, we still got that hold on and uh, going into three. Well, you got to have something. It's a dirt track. You got to use the steering wheel a little bit. Well, I'm too old to hit that hole. It hurts when you hit that hole. Thirteenth so. career late model win. You told me earlier this year you've been doing this now for more than 25 years. Well, according to my wife, this is my 25th year. I I don't know. I thought she would remember. She, I thought it was my 24th. She says 25, so I guess it's 25. People you want to thank? All my sponsors, Yangling, my crew. They did a heck of a job tonight. Uh, Specialty Turb and Tiger Machine. Uh, Jimmy Poljack, I appreciate all your help and uh, sticking with me with Yingling and Mr. Fuhrer. And I uh, just want to thank all the fans for coming tonight. I got a question for you. Are you eligible to be the Yingling driver of the week? Uh, we'll have to ask Jimmy that. Maybe, maybe he'll give me a free case of beer. Congratulations, Dave. You're a winner. And the Pizza Hut Super Late Models, he picks up a $100 bonus from Pizza Hut as part of the Pizza Hut Winner's Circle program. Catellis' first run this year in the Catellis Family 64 alongside of Tommy Schoenhofer as they hit the gas pedal off of turn four, and we are racing. Down the back straightaway, Schoenhofer with the lead. 
Scott Shep into second. Louis Bradish third and climbing the ladder in four. Catellus off the pace in the 64, trying to gather it back up. Daryl Charlier bumps him and spins. And we'll get the lap in. The caution is out for the midway missile, Daryl Charlier. Craig Catellus had a problem in the 64 up atop turn four. And Daryl Charlier bumped him and spun. Charlier is the caution. Green is out. Schoenhofer in front, Shep still second, Bradish third, Pegger is fourth. Bradish drifting high in turn four. Pegger moves to third. Angelico is up to fifth. He and Steve Beatty race into turn one side by side. Boy, Daryl Charlier is in a hurry. He's passed about 10 cars already. Craig can tell us out of shape again to the 64, gathers it back up. Charlier is just flying up through there. He gets a piece of Pete Laurie, and Laurie is into the wall. Caution is out. Daryl Charlier in the 12 got into the 11 of Pete Laurie and, and Loria able to get it woed down just before hitting the wall again. Up into the wall he went. And Pete is not going to be a happy guy as he climbs out of the race car. Charlier had passed about 10 cars in just over a lap since the restart. Shemp and Pegger behind him. Green is waving again. Pegger dives to the inside into second, and Angelico is on the move. He jumps up to third. Shemp is now fourth. Bradish is fifth. Schoenhofer, your leader. Pegger challenging for the lead off of four down the front shoot. Side by side, Tommy Schoenhofer, Mike Pegger Jr. with Daniel Angelicchio in tow. Shemp fourth, Bradish fifth, and it's Brian Hanks, Steve Beatty, and Daryl Charlier. Pegger going for the lead off of four. They're side by side. 15 laps to go, 15 remaining. Tommy Schoenhofer still has the lead, and here comes Daniel Angelicchio on the outside. Runs out of racetrack, has to burp the gas a little bit. Could have ourselves a three wide battle here in a moment. Pegger will lead by a car length. Dennis Curry to the, or no, excuse me, that's Craig Catellus to the pits in car 64. Pegger now in front, but again off a of turn two. The outside seems to be the better line. Schoenhofer battles back even into three. This will be lap seven. Pegger leads again by this time two car lengths. Mike seems to have the better of it in three and four, and Schoenhofer the faster in one and two. The Cochrane Automotive Tri-State Hose Triple S Auto Outlet 1C being chased by Tommy Schoenhofer and the Brooks Automotive Group, 14 of Daniel Angelicchio. Scott Shemp fourth. Bradish fifth, Charlier sixth, Brian Hank seventh, Steve Beatty eighth, John Holt, Josh Holt, Graver ninth, and Russ Kolasar runs tenth in car 27. Tommy Schoenhofer about to pull back even almost. Stefani glances off the wall in the 65. He's got his spoiler hanging. 11 laps to go. What a three car battle we've got going on. Pegger, a third generation driver. Schoenhofer, a third generation driver. Angelicchio, a second generation driver. Shep, a third generation driver, running in four. Angelique, or excuse me, Charlier, a third generation driver running in fifth. Halfway, 10 laps to go. And Tim Stefanik with his spoiler hanging has got the lead trio breathing down his neck on the back shoe. Caution is out, and that may be a break as Tim Stefanik with that spoiler hanging off the car was right in front of the leaders.
Mike Pegger Jr. almost won, remember, two weeks ago here. Finishing the top three up at Tri City on Sunday. Green is out. He continues to lead. And now Angelico on the outside trying to get around Schoenhofer for second. Bradish, Shemp, and we got a spin. Hard into the wall. That was Dennis Curry. Dennis Curry in car eight. Dennis Curry in the eight, Sly spinning around, and Steve Beatty collected in the B4, also spinning the five, J of Daryl Dow, and the 65 of Tim Stefanik. And parked down here in turn four is Mark Moach Jr. in the 15. Hopefully the green can stay out. We had such a great race going. Oh, somebody's ducking out of line. Green is out. Louis Bradish gambled and lost. He lost. He tried to guess the start and missed calculated. And we got another wreck. Honest to God. Whew. Daryl Dow was the victim again. He and Terry Kerr got together going into one and two, and Daryl Dow ends up in the wall in the 5J car. Who's your tires at all divisions here at Pittsburgh? Green is out. Schoenhofer jumped, I think. Oh, we got another wreck. Bunch of cars. Scott Shemp, Louis Bradish, Daryl Charlier, Justin Lamb, Terry Kerr. Guys are trying to win every race in the first lap. Russ Kolasar, part of it in the 27C. And there's another car up behind a 93X, who I think that's the double zero of Josh Holtgraber, and he's out of his car, too. It's not, it's not. Josh is over in turn four. And we are racing again. Hager and Angelico one and two. Brian Hank trying to hold off Tommy Schoenhofer for third. Josh Holtgraver is fifth. Hager running the inside. Angelico running the outside. Daniel closes the gap down the back chute. He's going to the high side at three and four. Pegger still in front. Angelicchio again closing ground as they head down the back straightaway. Now Daniel tries to dive under Mike into three. Wheel to wheel for the lead off of four. Still Pegger and Angelicchio one and two, seven laps for the checkered. Hank is third, Schoenhofer fourth, Holtgraver fifth. Mark Boats Jr. and Dennis Curry are next. Leakio goes to the top again. It's a run off the turn. It's Mike Pager Jr. No room for air. Six laps to go. Angelicchio has got the momentum on the outside of the second turn down the back straightaway. He backs out rather than force the issue. Five laps to go, five to go. And they're closing on the back of the field again. Now the back shoot. Brian Hank still third, Tommy Schoenhofer fourth. Josh Holtgraver fifth, Angelicchio to the inside. He's got his nose ahead off of four. They are about as close as you can be into one. And Angelicchio puts the brakes on and has to spin and does spin the car. Caution is out. He saves it, but the caution was already thrown. 
It's a shorter back than normal after the earlier wreck, but only five laps to go, five to go. And Angelico is going to spin again. Five laps to go. It's still Mike Fager Jr. Schoenhofer now second, Brian Hank third, Josh Holtgraber is up to fourth. Mark Boach Jr. is still fifth with four laps to go, four to go. Three laps to go. Angelico around the eight of Dennis Curry. He's now moved his way up to sixth. Mike Pager Jr.'s number one Cochran Tri State Hose Triple S Auto Outlets. Rocket with a 602 crate motor driving off here. Brian Hank, second, Hulk Raver, third, Schoenhofer has slipped to fourth and out. Moving to fifth is Daniel Angelicchio. One lap to go, one to go. Angelicchio up high will bring it down without hitting the wall off the fourth turn. This will be his first win at Pittsburgh's Pennsylvania Motor Speedway and his first great late model win for Mike Pager Jr. Bryant Hanks second. Who's going to get third? It's going to be Hulk Raver third, Schoenhofer fourth, and Angelicchio fifth. Mike, congratulations. A job well done. Unfortunate all those cautions because some real fun racing out in front. You and Tommy early, and then you and Daniel there toward the end. Yeah, it was uh, really good racing, and uh, it's fun racing down here with these guys. Wide racetrack tonight. Could you move the car around, or did you feel better at one particular spot? Uh, the car was working the best on the low and uh, middle end of the track. What's it feel like to finally get, well, I shouldn't say finally, because you haven't done that much crate late model racing, but to get sort of the monkey off your back? Yeah, we uh, it started out with a little bit of bad luck, but the last uh, few times I've raced, we've done pretty good. Yeah, second here two weeks ago, win tonight, you had a third to Tri-City, so as long as you're finishing near the front, you've got to be pretty pleased. Yeah, we're, uh, it wasn't it wasn't for my guys, Lynn Geisler, Andy, uh, HB, my uncle, and my dad and grandfather, uh, we wouldn't be able to do this. You're learning a lot working with Lynn and his race team? Yeah, it's, uh, it's completely different than from what I was used to. Well, congratulations. Good job. Thank you. Mike Pegger, Jr., first, folks, your winner in the Brockers Machine Shop, Crate Late Models. Green is out. And Bruce Drystad takes the lead. J.E. Stalter to third. So Martinek in the 65 comes down. Jacob Hawkins at the 13. Nowhere to go. He spins the car. Caution is out. Caution out. 65, Tom Martin, I don't know if he'll be scored in that or not. And here we go again. Three wide for the lead in the middle of one and two. Still dry stat in front. And now almost trying to get three wide, two wide trying to get three for second to seen. Dives into the bottom of turn three, and he'll take the lead away from Bruce Drystad, racing off of four. 
Drystad second, Charlier third, and Stolter fourth. Charlier now closes on to scene. Stalter to third. Drystad fourth, Martinek fifth, and Mike Bassage, Kevin Miller, and Chris Bassage. Oh, Martinek in the 65 comes up the racetrack on the 18 of Bruce Drystad, who has to take evasive action to senior leader side by side for second. Three wide just outside the top five. Look at his battle for the lead off of turn four. The Martins Ferry Madman down on the rail. J.E. Stalter nosing ahead of Daryl Charlier for second. Charlier trying to squeeze between Stalter and Tassine. Down the back chute, it is Wayne Tassine by just a car length into three in the DT Dino Woodruff Carbs number 10. But here comes the Overrunner Construction Last Lap Cafe 17 of J.E. Stalter. Leading lap number four. Daryl Charlier third, Tom Martinek fourth, Mike Bassage fifth, Chris Bassage sixth, Kevin Miller seventh, and Jacob Hawkins is picking him off. He's around Bruce Drystadt and closing in on the front seven cars. J.E. Stalter extends the advantage. Jacob Hawkins passing two more cars around the 71C of Chris Bassett to the 4M of Kevin Miller. He and Mike Bassett both to the inside of Tom Martinek. Seven laps down. Stalter by almost a straightaway over to scene. Charlier third, Mike Bassett, and now Jacob Hawkins trying to squeeze under Tom Martin, not being able to do so. A good battle for fifth. Stalter all by himself here, completing lap number nine. Six to go, car pitting. Jacob Hawkins now has moved, has moved his way back up to fifth for that first lap spin. We're less than just now four laps to go. Four to go. Hawkins trying to continue his parade toward the front goes around the 71 M of Mike Bassage for fourth. Three laps to go. J.E. Stalter took the lead on lap four. And he has uh, drove off. This will be his. Oh, we got a spin. We got a spin. Just as your leader was lapping, and wow, 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 wow. Daryl uh, Wayne Tassine and Daryl Charlier were in a slide side by side for a second, and they were able to avoid Ted Beaver by inches over there in the middle of three and four. They got to be wiping the sweat off of their brows. That was close. And the Martins Ferry Madman brings them to life.
Jared Hawk or Jacob Hawk is down low. Mike Bassage both get around weight to see who finds himself now in fifth. Charlier is second. Here they come off of turn number four. Oh, contact in the middle of the pack. Caution is out. Looks like Chuck Kennedy in the A1 and Bruce Drystad in the A team. That lap will count. Here we go. J.E. Stelter brings them to life. Hawkins on the inside. Charlier goes to the outside. Down the back straight away. The battle is on. It's the Martins Ferry Man Man Steal Your Leader. The last lap cafe, Tri Sun Concrete over and under construction. Still Willow Will for second. And it looks like the Martins Ferry Mad Man has got the fastest horse in the field tonight. J.E. Stalter leads him down the back chute. Hawkins just ahead of Charlier for second. Mike Bassich is fourth. And J.E. Stalter will get the win. Hawkins second, Charlier third, Mike Bassich fourth. Kevin Miller gets fifth. How about a nice hand, folks? He's out of the car. J.E. Stalter gets his first win of 08. Boy, it, was it as fast as it looked? It was good. It was good. It was good. It wasn't. It was not slipping much. You were straight coming off those turns. About time. <laughs> now, were you worried late in the race when you get a caution like that and you know that Jacob and Daryl are right there behind you? I was thinking about it. I figured they were somewhere right back there, close. But you were uh, the class of the field tonight. It's got to feel good. Thanks. That was great. People you want to thank? My brother, my wife. All the crew, sponsors. And you get another $50 tonight from Pizza Hut. Thank Pizza Hut. <laughs> All right, how about a nice hand, folks, for J.E. Stalter, your winner in the Miley Truck Rental E-Mods. On, here they come, Sunoco Race Fuels Pure Stocks. 415 laps. It is Jake the Snake Simmons from the pole grabbing the early lead. Are crowded behind him down the back chute. Pat Welton moves into second. The JEM Lounge Auto Plus 45. That's Kamaker now into third. Wadalex, Anthony, Robertson, Kachuba all together. Simmons goes high in turn two, and here comes Pat Welton. Jake the Snake, the more concrete Simmons window cleaning 68X, steal your leader into turn three. Weldon is inside, will pull even in four. Kamaker right behind in third. Wadalex, Anthony, Robertson, Kachuba, Webb, Hyman, Schwartzmiller. Your running order. Simmons right in the middle of the racetrack. Extends the lead a bit. Joey Anthony moves to fourth in the 69X. Caution, a little hard wreck here on the front stretch. Mark Perry, the 17, looked like he went over the front end of the 50 of Josh Wetmore. Wetmore is without the left rear wheel. Caution is back out. First time in this race, 11 laps to go. Green is out.
Simmons still in front and Kamaker now wheels to second. Joey Anthony with a charge on the outside trying to move into third. Kamaker looks to the inside of Simmons. Bill Robertson has moved to fifth. And Mark Perry is headed back to the pitch in car 17. Has not been a good night for race team 17. Kamaker dives to the inside of Simmons into four. We can't make it. Stick down low. He'll follow up off the corner. Team X running first and third. Jake Simmons and Joe Anthony with Craig Kamaker in between. F12 has pitted Mike Harris. Pat Weldon fourth. Bill Robertson fifth. Kachuba is sixth. Then it's Steve Webb, Bob Schwartzmiller, and Mitch Waddlett all running with the lead pack. But Jake the Snake is driving off. Kamaker was able to put some heavy pressure on Simmons for a couple of laps after the restart, but Jake the Snake is pulling away. And the damage incorporated Simmons window cleaning more concrete Chevy. Bill Robertson now underneath Pat Weldon. Waffle four there side by side for fourth. Joe Anthony trying to challenge Kamaker for second. Joe Anthony now tries the inside of Kamaker for second in turn four. Five laps to go. Kamaker still second, Anthony third at the flag stand. Weldon fourth, Robertson fifth, Kachuba sixth, Webb seventh, Schwartzmiller eighth, Waddlett is ninth, and Mike Mon is currently tenth in a 39. Jake the Snake looking for his first win of the season. And barring any uh, misfortunes with himself or a late race caution, appears he'll have it. Three laps to go. This would give uh, Jake 17 if he can hold on here 17 career wins in the division which would tie him for sixth all time with Jeff Bronaszewski and move him ahead of the Danimal Danny Rich he's a lap and a half away from the checkered and a straightaway ahead of Craig Kamaker. Anthony third, Weldon fourth, Robertson fifth. White flag waving for Jake Simmons. Jake tied with the Denny Rich with 16 wins, but here comes the 17th. Moving him into a time with Jeff Ronaszewski, your Sudoku Race Fuels Pure Stock winner, Jake Simmons, second by Justin Nose, Kamaker, and Anthony as they slap fenders. Weldon fourth, Bill Robertson fifth. Up next will be the amateur stocks, the Flynn Tire and Auto amateur stocks. All right, let's talk to the winner. Well, when you start up front like that, and by the way, because you did, I picked you to win, so I'm glad you came through. But if you don't win, it's kind of a disappointment, right? 
Oh, yeah, last week was a real disappointment. I was spun out twice by the fourth lap, you know, that guy's uh, ended up ending a frame, did a lot of work this week, and wasn't sure how it was going to be. But obviously, Danny's like the ultimate frame guy. Every time he pulls it, this thing comes back faster. So It looked like, you know, Craig and them were able to press you a little bit after early, but once you got a few laps on this thing, it seemed like it took off. Yeah, it took me a while just to figure it out. Like, you know, we put different brakes and that in this thing, and... It's just weird just trying to get the set up back to where it was. Okay, a tip for you now. You've moved ahead of your pal, Danny. You both had 16 wins. Now you got 17, so you've won up them. Yeah, had a boy by time, huh? <laughs> you get $50 bonus tonight for Pizza Hut. Thanks. Got to thanks. Well, Pizza Hut, Simmons Window Cleaning. Uh, what's the other one? More Concrete and all these guys here. Congratulations. Thanks, Tal. Jake Simmons, folks, your winner in the Sunoco Race Fuels Pure Stocks. And Deshad brings him out of turn four for the green flag. Kurt Bish on the inside of the 76 car of Tony White. Four wide going into the back straightaway. And it's the 22. The 22 Robbie Torrens pulls out into the lead coming out of turn four. The number 10 at Dan Dushai holds on to second. With the 76 of Tony White on the outside. He now passes him for second place. And Eric Goldberg is up into third. Out of turn four, it's still Robbie Torrance, Tony White, and Eric Goldberg. Goldberg working the back bumper of Tony White out of turn two. He goes to the inside in turn three, Goldberg to second. Here's Kurt Bish on the inside of the purple and white 10 of Dan Deshied. But it's still Robbie Torrance with the race lead ahead of Eric Goldberg by about five, six car lengths. Robbie Torrens coming up on the lime green 45. Goldberg now catching the 22 of Robbie Torrens. His lead has shrunk to about a car length coming down to the start finish line. Tony White still in third, followed by Kurt Bish up to fourth. Third place car, Tony White. Happy birthday to him. His birthday is tomorrow. It's Eric Goldberg once again closes in turn four on the 22 car of Robbie Torrance. Halfway. Eric Goldberg still knocking on the door of the 22, Robbie Torrens. He tries to the, move to the outside, but Torrens makes his car three lanes wide. Goldberg on the inside now. Torrens holds him off on the back straightaway. They're coming into turn three. Here's Goldberg to the inside. He comes around Robbie Torrens for the lead, but pushes up in turn four. Torrens back to the inside. Torrens will keep the lead at the start finish line. Goldberg tries the inside this time. Torrens still holds on coming down the back straightaway. But Goldberg's on the inside again. They're side by side in turn four. 
but it looks as if Torrance has it at the start finish line. Goldberg on the inside again in turn two. Still Torrance in turn three. Goldberg still within a couple feet of Robbie Torrance. Two laps to go. Robbie Torrance starts to open up a lead on the back straightaway on Eric Goldberg. Robbie Torrance takes the white flag. He's opened up about a four car length lead over Goldberg. Tony White, birthday man, still in third. Battle for fourth, Kurt Bish. Robbie Torrance takes the checkered flag over Eric Goldberg, Tony White, and the 54 of Darren Ferguson finishes fourth. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Well, after taking off a year for racing past two-time champion, how does it feel to be back in the winner's circle? This is where I want to be. Yeah, we can see you You and Eric Goldberg were having a great battle there for six laps or so. Yeah, that's the first time Eric Goldberg ever ran me clean, and that was cool of him. Well, congratulations. All right, thank you. We'd like to thank Pizza Hut for a $20 gift certificate tonight for Pizza Hut Winter Circle. Congratulations. Hey, uh... I don't even know how many years it's been, but my buddy Rick's dad passed away, and today's the day we lost him, and this race is kind of for him. That pushed me a little bit harder. All right, Robbie, great job. Congratulations to Robbie and all the winners tonight, and all you moms again have a great Mother's Day tomorrow. We thank you for coming out, and please take your time exiting the Speedway and have a safe trip home, and we'll see you next Saturday and Sunday here at Pittsburgh's Pennsylvania Motor Speedway.